November 18th, 2011. A small indie title was released. You've probably heard of it. Minecraft. Over the coming decade, Minecraft would take the world by storm. It would dominate every aspect of digital media, from music to animation. Young and old, everyone loved Minecraft. And why not? It was such an experience, from punching your first tree, building a house, all the way to exploring other dimensions and fighting dragons. It had something for everyone. It appealed to all ages. But this? This is where the problem began. With such wide appeal and domination of the digital media ecosphere, it was truly a trendsetter. And where there's a trend, there's an opportunity to make money. And with money and a healthy lack of creativity, gaming developers jumped on the trend, making copycat games, trying to edge into this incredible market that had seemingly appeared overnight. Minecraft was gaming's golden ticket. But let's get back to that healthy lack of creativity. With such booming success and the ability to create what seemed like free money, game developers rode the Minecraft train into the dirt pushing experimentation out, and pushing the four-chord method. If you're not sure what the four-chord method is, it's the ability to reproduce almost every pop song ever using just four chords. Now, you're probably thinking, what does the four-chord method have to do with Minecraft? Well, developers and publishers seem to pick apart and analyze Minecraft to death, trying to figure out what exactly it was that made Minecraft such a resounding success. What ingredient made up that secret sauce? Was it the ability to run around with a pumpkin on your head? Or ride a pig off a cliff with a carrot on a stick? From this, the gaming industry took its first hit. A lack of creativity. If you're like me, feeling older than time itself, then you'll probably remember having a Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1. Having a huge stack of games that you would eagerly look forward to come home to. Even in the PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360 era, this was the norm. Every gamer at the time would play a huge variety of titles, from action RPG to racing sims. But this new era of sandbox development and personal creativity, the make the game what you want genre, ended this. You could now personalize your experience to the things that you enjoyed, and you'd no longer be chained to the developer's path through their artistic expression. The problem was that developers and publishers couldn't see that this was what made Minecraft such an amazing game. You could make what truly appealed to you from within it. It was only limited by your personal creativity, and with this, astounding oversight and determination to gain market share, developers tried to reproduce its appeal. With some success, they added base building, personal server hosting, world shaping, and brute force AI to almost every title over the coming decade. And with this, creativity and storytelling died. This is what I meant by the four chord method. With the overproduction of the core mechanics of Minecraft, there was no need to try multiple games, or even release demo versions of games, because if you played one, you played them all. You know exactly what you're in for. Those same four core mechanics packaged up with different visual assets and music. Now, it would be unfair for me to say that the last decade hasn't had some truly amazing games with incredible creativity born from Flash Player and indie developers to crack the tsunami of whitewash reproductions. Titles such as The Binding of Isaac, Franbo, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Rocket League. These games truly did something different. They took a genre that was struggling and reimagined it, experimented and succeeded because of it. So why was this such a problem? It reshaped gaming, but how did it kill it? Well, when you look at the fundamentals of gaming, it's an experience that's designed to challenge and teach you the same way that a child learns risk and reward, danger and pain, in a safe, controlled environment. With this overabundance of the same core mechanics and four chord reproductions, there were very few evolutions and new experiences to learn and grow from less challenge and diversity available to the gaming community. Gamers focused on reaction times to deal with the flood of brute force AI enemy, and the only memorization and learning that we did for the next decade was crafting recipes and ability to AFK farm or break the game. No longer were we memorizing button combos and attack sets or even enemy movement patterns, and learning niche skills for multiple titles because, well, the industry changed. Everyone wanted a slice of that pie, and then came the death of storytelling. While this absolute domination of the gaming industry was happening, there was one other major shift in the digital media ecosphere. The age of the internet. As the internet became more widespread and accessible, developers chose to focus all of their resources on online gaming. Developers such as Activision, with their incredibly popular title Call of Duty, had been slowly doing away with any kind of storytelling in their games, depreciating their solo campaigns, and this wasn't helped by companies such as Microsoft with their push for always online experience from the initial launch of the Xbox One. Thankfully, consumers pushed back and Microsoft had no choice but to revert the changes and allow offline use of their console. 
And with this, there may be a shred of light for the gaming industry and the future of the gaming ecosphere. So, how do we fix it? A market is controlled by supply and demand. When consumers push back and stop purchasing these reproductions, the gaming ecosphere can heal. In the same way that a forest begins to regrow and spread when it's no longer being decimated by the human encroachment or wildfires, the gaming ecosphere will diversify, looking for its next big thing. And with this will come experimentation and real development. Gaming is such a unique industry in that it has affected everything from music to military applications and even aviation. It's open to anyone and everything. It shines a light on both the darkest and the brightest parts of humanity, friendships and hatred, joy and sadness. It has the ability to move you with its incredible immersion and change you from the things that you experience within it. It's such an integral part to the human experience, it'll never truly die. But, like most things, it can suffer metaphoric disease, and it's our job as consumers to heal it. So I'll leave you with this. If you bought a ton of games over the past decade, but you find yourself with nothing to play, find a game that isn't tinted by Minecraft colored glasses, and support it. Thanks for watching. I'm Cheese, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.